Hello everyone, my name is Joe Scorso and channel is called Ethernet Wink and in today's video we are continuing the Quant Finance Advent of Code series that I'm doing. 25 uh, videos throughout December of pretty much going from very basics of quantitative finance and data science and stuff like that until uh, the very top is going to be some pretty advanced machine learning, some pretty cool stuff. And today we have our last video involving options. Now, this is not the end of the rabbit hole. If you've been following along with options and like last uh, video step with the newton raphson method for finding implied volatility. If you really enjoy that, I encourage you to go um, go do more stuff regarding options. Try to make your own pricing model. Go crazy, right? Explore different pricing models. There's even more than the three that we covered in this. Um, there's things with Poisson, Poisson jumps and stuff like that. Very interesting stuff. Um, regardless though, this video is all about plotting. We're not going to really be calculating anything new. It's really just about plotting. Um, I think it's an underrated skill. I think it's an underrated skill and it's part of the reason why I included it because I wanted to get better at it. But um, yeah, so we're just going to be plotting a volatility surface today for the different chains. And we're actually not going to be using Plotly. We're going to be using Matplotlib because I couldn't get Plotly to work. If you guys know any code where you do plot a volatility surface with Plotly in 3D with an XYZ axis in like the way that we're going to do it, um, send me it, show me it, put it in the comments somewhere. I'd love to see it. Now, we're going to hop into things. Thank you guys for uh, really giving me a lot of followers on X. Uh, almost at 150 already. I wanted 100 by the end of the year. Looks like we're going to get to 150 by the end of the year. It's absolutely awesome. Thank you guys for that. If you guys actively trade, I have an algorithm with Luxalgo. You guys could sign up for this, put it on your trading view charts, and you guys could actively trade with me and a bunch of other awesome traders on Spaces. So let's hop right into the code. Let's take a look. Let's zoom in. Cool. So we're going to add to the previous code by plotting the volatility surface for each chain in 3D space. Okay. So that means that we only have to add one function. We only have to add this plot volatility function. All it needs is the chain that we calculate, the side, and the ticker. So we're going to go through that, but first I want to kind of refresh your guys' memory on what we're doing. So we have these contract objects that have all these different attributes, strikes, premiums, all the Greeks and implied volatility. Now we have this function to calculate the Black-Scholes pricing model premium for each contract. We have a function to do the newton raspin newton Raspin step to calculate implied volatility. Pretty much just the way I like to think about it is y equals mx plus b. If you have y, m, and x, you can find b. But you don't just do like the algebra like that. You kind of do guesses and you fix your error and you get as close to what the volatility should be with the premium that the market decides. Because in this chain function here, we um, get our premium for the Black-Scholes model, calculate all of our Greeks, intrinsic value, all that stuff, and then we get some market noise and we add that to the, um, uh, to the premium. What that will do is simulate the market trading a contract around, right? Because if everything was priced efficiently, there'd be no way to make money. But, well, there would be. You would just have to be very early. And that's not the way that this stuff works. Uh, the way that this stuff works is that sometimes contracts can get mispriced. And then sometimes contracts are not properly priced. Just They're just far away from their actual pricing for whatever reason. Maybe just by a little bit, maybe by a lot. And that's because different market participants with different um, bankrolls and with different opinions come together and trade the same things. And so that's why we can get these moves, and that's why we could I could have a career, right? Um, but this is what we're simulating right here, just with this random uh, random thing on a Gaussian normal distribution. Um, we're simulating that market trading it around, and we're getting a new premium there. Then we're finding the implied volatility, like I said before, kind of um, going backwards from that um, from this premium. What should the IV be? That's how it's actually done, but uh, we're just simulating the market volatility or the market uh, participants, I guess. And then we're just going to add that contract to a chain list and then just return the list. Same old get data function. <laughs> um, so, yeah, let's just go ahead and implement this. Whoops, not that. Let's just go ahead and implement this, um, this function, right? So we're going to need an X and a Y axis. Right, and so it's going to be an MP dot, and we're going to use mesh grid. 
And so it'll be, uh, we need two grids, so we're going to say C dot strike for C in chain. And then we're going to need another one, which is going to be our days to expiration. So we're going to say C dot DTE for C in chain, same thing. Uh, these variables are local to their list, so you can name them the same thing. Uh, cool. So now we need our Z axis, right? So it's going to be a just a NumPy array. And it's going to be of the implied volatility, so it's going to be the same thing. So C dot implied volatility, volatility for C in chain. Um, just want to make sure I spelled that right. Yep. Cool. So now uh, we actually need to add a little bit more to this. It's not just that. Um, we have to then reshape this. We have to then reshape this to be the same size. We just have to make sure, you know, right? This is pretty much all this is. It's just a big um, making sure. We have to make make sure that this is the same size of our um, of this of our list of chains, a list of strikes, and a expiration. Um, so yeah, in the code I have for you guys online, I have it with DTE first. So I'll just keep that consistent. So reshape it for the length of the days expiration in the chain, the length of the strikes in the chain, and that will be all. So that way we can just, oh wait, I need to hit it with one of these. There we go. There we go. <laughs> so now Z will be, Z's implied volatilities will be the same dimensions as X and Y. So that way the plot doesn't look stupid. And we could actually compare the two. So now that we have our axes figured out, we can plot it with matplotlib. So we have a figure, uh, fig size. I'm just going to go 12 and 6. Um, I'm going to go 12 and 8, actually. Why do I have squiggles here? Argument cannot appear after a keyword. Maybe because it needs another thing up. Parentheses. It's a tuple. My eyes playing tricks on me. There we go. <laughs> so now we can say AX and we have to add a subplot because the default is just to have two axes. So we're going to add a subplot and we're going to say how many rows, columns, and indexes we have. And then we need our projection. To actually be uh, 3D. So now we need to modify our plot surface. We need to modify this to be X, not that, Y, and Z. And then we need to do CMAP. We're going to set this to set this to that. And then we're going to keep on going. We're going to add a little, a few more things. So we're going to say edge color gets K. And then alpha gets 0 0.8. And this is not a get. We just say plot service. And then we just give it the um, sure is closed. missing a comma. That's all. So now we're going to set the title. This can just be an F string. So we're just going to say um, ticker side um, imply volatility surface. And then we can say um, actually also want to add a font size to that. font size gets 16. And then we're going to say ax dot set x label. And this will be our x's are our strike prices. Going to just copy and paste that. 
and I just want that to be just a little bit smaller. So there we go, and then ax dot set set y label. That's going to be our date expiration. I'm just going to say DTE. And then we're going to say ax.set z. Set z label. I don't know why that didn't prompt me to do it, but this is actually going to be the implied volatility. There we go. I can never, I never feel like I spell that right. And then we can say plt dot show. Now, if we open up a terminal, we should just be able to say Python, and then I call this vault service dot py. Run this, and then we should just get our plots appearing right here. Yep. So now we have a three D implied volatility surface um, showing up. So now why is this useful? This is useful because we can just visualize an entire chain of contracts. And then we could see um, which ones have the highest and lowest expiration, I mean, uh, implied volatility relative to each other. So now if I wanted to buy calls on Apple, I would be looking at these two strikes. I'd be looking at either the 30 day out 220s or 222s or the, um, these shouldn't be in halves, but the um, 30, to 31 day out uh, 226s because these have the lowest implied volatility. This one's at about um, 0.60, maybe 0.17. This one's also around that same area. I would not want to buy these, right? Actually, it'll turn me down there. So this one's at about 0.16. So is the other one. Um, I would not want to buy these when these exist, right? Same thing for puts. Would not want to buy this put. I want this one or this one. Right. That is how that's what we were trying to model. And we've successfully successfully done it. So not that hard to just add these subplots because the subplots are pretty much um we have to add every axis that we want. That's why it's a little bit different because we actually have to take care of having a uh, a z axis along with our x and y. And we have to make sure that it's the same shape as it. So that way the chart actually looks proportional. And then we can just do everything that we need to do and visualize it um, effectively. So yeah, that's all in this video about um, volatility surfaces. This is all in the series about options pretty much. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you guys are enjoying the series. I hope that you guys want to stick around. And the next video will be about async cache. So that way we can um, do a more efficient one of these. And then we're going to be doing a backtesting engine. We're going to be applying two different strategies to it, to the backtesting engine. Then I'm going to be stress testing that portfolio. That's what I get giddy about. That's what I'm excited to do. Um, yeah, hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Hope that you guys watch the next ones. And I will see you guys in the next one.